so my first degree was a bachelor's degree in economics of East Asia, um, which I did at Ruhr Universität in Bochum mostly. But I also spent a whole summer in Shanghai, which was a unique experience for me. So I could, uh, of course, get to know the Chinese culture better. But um, it also gave me a very good impression of uh, the Chinese economy and uh, in how many ways it's very similar to the economy we have in uh, Europe now. And not that much uh, as it was in the past, maybe, or what many people believe it to be. Um, in uh, Shanghai, I uh, studied at Tongji University, uh, where they have a large international school. And uh, I did several summer classes there. Um, which was a great experience and which uh, also uh, helped me to make my decision to continue in the area of economics and finance with the uh, different courses they offered at this university. So many people, when they look at my CV, the first question they usually have is, um, how did you end up doing a PhD in finance when you started out with a bachelor's degree in economics of East Asia? And um, to be honest, I think it's quite hard to know what you want when you uh, come directly from school. There are so many opportunities, uh, so many choices you can make, uh, which career you would like to pursue. And um, back then and still now, um, China and Asia is uh, one of my main interests. And um, looking back now, it was actually uh, this bachelor's degree in economics of East Asia that finally brought me to finance. Um, because a large part of this degree was uh, getting to know the Chinese economy and uh, also the rich history that China has in terms of its economy. When we look at China now and ask people about what do you know about the economy of China, uh, what they would usually say is that they uh, think it's a country that booms, that has this immense economic growth and is known for its exports. but. Um, it's uh, also uh, true that China has this uh, really diverse history in terms of its economic regimes and also in terms of its monetary policy. So um, I decided to focus in my uh, bachelor's degree on financial economics of uh, Asia and uh, especially China. And uh, this is how I ended up uh, getting to know the topic of financial economics and also wanting to pursue it further. Um, I think uh, the Master of International Business was a very uh, natural choice for me. After all, I came from a background in, in international studies and um, I definitely wanted to maintain this international uh, experience I had and even broaden my knowledge in terms of different cultures and um, at the same time wanted to go more towards finance. So. Um, in the um, Master of International Business, I, I profited very much from these uh, uh, surroundings I had here at Frankfurt School with uh, both uh, students from, of course, many different countries, but also from many different academic backgrounds. So um, I definitely got a new perspective uh, on of all sorts of things um, as I studied with people who had backgrounds in biology or literature or even music. I think the Master of Finance is um, um, a very focused and a very quantitative program. Very early on in this program you can choose between uh, many different specializations such as corporate finance, capital markets, risk management and others. And um, this program gives you very, very detailed knowledge about the world of finance. I think I mostly benefited from the hands-on approach in this, this program with many professors coming from the industry. So you learn a lot from doing case studies. You can take part in international competitions. And uh, also a lot of the curriculum follows the CFA. So you can also have an additional certificate on the go. So now I'm here at Frankfurt School doing my PhD in finance. and. What I'm mostly interested in in my research is how bank behavior and monetary policy ultimately affect the real economy. So how in the end uh, corporates are affected by what's going on in the financial world. And here again, my focus is mostly on the international dimension. Um, so many companies, especially here in Germany, they are uh, 
getting their financing from small local banks. Uh, but still, as also the financial crisis has shown, uh, what happens elsewhere can affect them. As many companies all over the world were affected by the U.S. financial crisis, although it originated uh, very uh, far away from where these companies were located in the end. Um, so in my first research project that I did, I also um, had a look at this uh, international dimension of banking. And um, one thing that happened after the uh, financial crisis in the US was that financial institutions uh, in the US were uh, heavily supported by the Federal Reserve, which is uh, the US central bank. So the Federal Reserve uh, gave financial institutions a lot of money to uh, restabilize the financial system. And um, also unique about this uh, was that the data was very soon after all that happened made public. So in this unique case, we could actually find out uh, which financial institutions got how much money. Um, and uh, one of the peculiar things about that was that most of the money that was distributed in the U.S. actually ended up outside the U.S. And um, so uh, we came up with this research question about how many, uh, how the many banks uh, in Germany that made use of uh, this funding may have changed or not changed their behavior in response to this funding shock they received. And uh, to answer these questions, uh, I went to a Bundesbank to get unique data and uh, have a look at the interest rates that uh, banks were offering on their deposits and charging on their credits to German non-financial corporations. And um, after doing a lot of data work, uh, our results now actually suggest that these banks that received funding from the US um, did indeed change uh, their interest rate setting all, uh, here in Germany and not in the US. So um, right now, uh, what we uh, look at seems like that banks that are here in Germany um, lowered their interest rates on deposits they charge to German clients, which could mean in return that uh, they use cheaper funding from the US to substitute deposits that were relatively expensive here in Germany. And some further results might also indicate that maybe even uh, the clients of these banks that got funding there could have profited from this bit because uh, also after a few months, banks may have lowered their um, loan rates. So uh, also maybe there was a bit of easing in the funding market in Germany due to all the money that was distributed far away in the US. So I think what my first uh, research project made clear is that if you want to answer interesting empirical questions, it's very, very important to get good data. And this good data is mostly confidential. So um, one of the key aspects of doing uh, this empirical research is getting access to the data. And um, luckily here at Frankfurt School, a lot of the faculty are very well connected and uh, that made it easier for me to get access to Bundesbank data. And now in my second um, uh, research project that I've just started, I have uh, started to go to the European Central Bank to get a data set and work with the data there. Um, right now, this project is still in very early stages and um, we've collected a lot of data. Um, so far, it all looks very interesting and promising. So we are gonna have to see what this project will reveal in the end. So looking back now on my academic path so far, um, I think my advice to other students would be that um, you should allow for some flexibility in your plans. Um, coming from school, many people think that they need to have this perfect career and know what they want right away and stick with it. And uh, as you can see in my CV, uh, I took a lot of turns uh, still got where I wanted in the end. And um, so I believe uh, it is very important that you uh, every now and then sit back, think about what you're doing and where you want to go and not be afraid to change that. <laughs>